देवान तिराक से खलीफा ने पूरे दुनिया के मुस्लिमों को आवाज लगाई और जो भी अल्लाह की कुर्बत को नहीं समझते उन्हें खत्म कर Hello and welcome to Do I Like It a Quint production where we review anything and everything under the sun I'm Soumya Lakhani and today I'll tell you do I like Faraz Faraz is a film that's been directed by Hansel Mehta and has released across cinema halls today that is the 3rd of Feb. It's based on the 2016 Dhaka terrorist attack in which 29 people were killed inside this cafe called the Holy Artisan Bakery. Basically five terrorists had taken hostages and divided them on the basis of their religion and nationality and the end result was that 29 people were killed including one Indian national. So this is what Hansel Mehta's film is about. So inside the cafe is when the people who are visiting the cafe have been taken hostage including the staff and outside the cafe you have distraught parents, you have a fumbling police force and Hansel Mehta marries the two of these aspects together and gives us this film. Now one of the questions that come is why is the film called Faraz? Uh, for those of you who remember in 2016 when this dhaka terrorist attack had happened you know of course our news channels were flashing what was happening they were telling us what was happening we read news reports about it and one of the stories that had come forward and one that actually was completely heartbreaking was the story of a young 20 year old bangladeshi muslim boy called faraz ayaz hussain now faraz came from a prominent wealthy family and he was visiting the cafe with two of his friends when this terrorist attack had happened and he was one of the 29 victims of this attack in fact now i remember reading this report in 2016 and feeling completely gutted by this but faraz because he was bangladeshi muslim and the terrorists had made it obvious that bangladeshi muslims were not the target of this attack he was given the option of walking out of the cafe and he refused to do so because two of his friends who he was dining with there uh, were non bangladeshis and he refused to abandon them in the cafe you know so that is the story of faraz and this is how he got killed in this attack and i remember many months i think if i am not mistaken a month few months later i had read an interview or, or or one of the speeches that faraz's mother had given to the media about how she knew that her son would not walk out of the cafe without his friends that he would not abandon them i still remember that gut punch i felt when the mother said that you know for for a mother to know that her young son had so much conscience in him had such a conscience that he would not walk out of the cafe without his friends um so this is pretty much uh, the premise of the film the film stars zahan kapoor who plays the titular role of faraz and then there is aditya rawal who plays one of the five terrorists called nibris and then there is juhi babbar who plays faraz's mother i have to say that i'm hoping to see zahan kapoor and aditya rawal a lot more i did think at first that the acting was a bit shaky as merely as an audience member and later on you know i was quite surprised with the way the film Uh, the turn the film had taken and then the acting skills of the two in especially aditya rawal i was uh, uh, there were a lot of scenes in which he really surprised me uh, juhi babbar plays the distraught mother and you know we actually do hope to see a lot more of her so when the trailer of the film had come out a few weeks ago i remember feeling a little conflicted and a bit confused because i felt that hansel mehta was falling into the trope of comparing good muslim with a bad muslim you know that good muslim versus bad muslim debate that we often talk about but once i walked out of the cinema hall after watching it i felt that he handled it with some sort of sensitivity and also this is based on a real life incident and one of the lingering questions that i was left with and i felt that was unanswered was the fact that here are five young boys who have taken the path of terrorism and the film doesn't address how they got brainwashed you know for the first few days after watching the film because i'd watched it a few days before its release i kept wondering and i kept asking myself this question and i kept looking for answers and i couldn't find it and later i felt now that a few days have passed i feel that maybe that was a deliberate move because 
Hansel doesn't delve into their past at all. The only glimpses of past we get is that you realize that Nibris, the terrorist, and Faraz, played by Zahan Kapoor, knew each other and that there was an education overlap. They probably studied together at some point of time. Beyond that, Hansel Mehta and his team of writers don't delve into the past. And I'm assuming that's a deliberate move because they just want to show what had happened instead of going back into why somebody was brainwashed or what circumstances were. One of the things that kind of took me by surprise when I was watching the film was Nibris's character. Because, you know, films that usually deal with a heavy subject like this don't uh, usually show glimpses of kindness in a terrorist. And this is not to say that there is any kind of empathy or sympathy that gets evoked for Nibris's character. But you can see that this is an amateur, this is a child, this is somebody who has been brainwashed, and this is someone who still retains a little bit of his humanity. I thought that was a very interesting aspect. Now, one of the things that I thought was quite choppy and quite, like, left me very disinterested was this ideological debate that happens between Faraz and Nibris inside the cafe. It seemed too rehearsed. It seemed... It just didn't seem organic. It didn't flow organically to me. Um, I felt that that was a scene that needed a lot more depth. It needed a lot more intensity. Maybe the writing could have been better. Maybe perhaps the acting... This is where maybe experienced actors or I don't know. I felt felt it to be a little bit choppy, frankly. Um, Another thing that they show in the film is that how the police force really fumbled. There were so many police personnel who were injured in this attack. There was a lot of shoddy planning that had gone into by the police forces. And I also heard a lot of criticism about this from, you know, people who were watching this film with me where they felt that, oh, but aise thodi hota hai, police itni underprepared thodi hoti hai. But I have to say that, you know, of course, this was something that happened in 2016. And I mean, don't really remember a lot about the role of the police at the time. But I have to say that it may seem that, oh, this is such shoddy police work, but maybe there was shoddy police work. Maybe the police was underprepared. Maybe the intel was not there in place. And I particularly wasn't very spooked by the uh, portrayal of the police. I did think in a lot of the cases that as reporters we end up covering, we do see a lot of shoddy police work and we do see a lot of ego clashes between, you know, heads of different forces. I also felt that, you know, while the subject is so moving and it's so heartbreaking and the story at the center of it is just so sad and there are points in the film where, you know, it kind of really hits you. But there are also points in the film where it seems a bit dull. So to me, the film could have been far better. I feel that the writing could have been a lot more improved. I wish the writing was better. But then that's just that's just what I think. So yeah, so this is this is what Faraz is all about. It's out in cinema halls. I hope uh, some of you go catch it. And um, this obviously could have been a lot better. I wish the scripting and the writing was a little bit more interesting. And I think that could have taken the film to completely different heights. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in. This is a Quint original podcast, executive produced by Shelly Walia and Ritu Kapoor, hosted by Soumya Lakhani and produced and edited by Anjali Palor. You were listening to the Quint's podcast. Quint's podcast.